Hold up. Before you click away thinking this is about to get weird, let me blow your mind with something that'll make you question every relationship you've ever had. That crush you're texting right now? Yeah, they probably remind you of your mom or dad. And no, that's not as creepy as it sounds. It's actually genius-level psychology that your brain has been pulling behind the scenes your entire life. Number one, your brain is a sneaky little matchmaker. Here's the kicker. Psychologist John Gottman suggests that mate attraction and selection may be the result of a phenomenon known as imprinting. Think of your brain as that friend who keeps setting you up on blind dates, except instead of using your Tinder preferences, it's using a template from when you were three years old. Your mind has been playing Cupid since before you could tie your shoes. This theory suggests that we can become psychologically conditioned to being attracted to a distinct parental personality. Your subconscious mind essentially bookmarked your parents' best qualities and filed them under future relationship goals. Every laugh, every gesture, every way they showed love got stored in your mental relationship database. Basically, your brain took notes during snack time and story hour, and now it's using that data to swipe right on people who give you those same warm, fuzzy feelings. It's like having a very specific type, except you never consciously chose that type. Your toddler brain did it while you were busy learning to walk. But wait, it gets even more specific than just personality traits. Number two, your eyes don't lie, and neither do your parents' genes. Ready for this? Studies have indicated that people are attracted to partners who resemble themselves or their parents in terms of physical traits, including eye color. Your unconscious mind is literally playing Where's Waldo with your parents' features in every face you find attractive. This isn't some Freudian theory. This is hard science with measurable results. It's like your brain has a very specific shopping list that includes must-have dad's sense of humor and bonus points for mom's eye crinkles when they smile. This isn't just about major features either. We're talking about subtle details like the curve of a smile or the way someone's eyebrows move when they're concentrating. Your brain is basically running a facial recognition program you never installed. And the wildest part is you're doing this completely without realizing it. Your brain is running facial recognition software in the background while you're just trying to figure out if this person likes pineapple on pizza. You think you're making conscious choices, but your unconscious mind is over there with a detailed checklist from childhood. Speaking of things happening without your permission, let's talk about why good relationships make this pattern even stronger. Number three, the better your childhood, the more you'll copy-paste. This one's actually heartwarming in a slightly narcissistic way. Research shows that humans display sexual imprinting, particularly when the parent-child relationship is positive. Translation, if your parents were awesome, your brain essentially bookmarked them as the gold standard for future romantic partners. Your childhood happiness becomes your adult dating blueprint. As relationship expert Lauren Bradley explains, wanting to be close to your parent, liking their attributes, and wanting those qualities in a partner does not mean you want to have sex with your parent. It means that your parent has done an excellent job role modeling healthy experiences for you. It's basically your brain saying, more of this energy, please. Your unconscious mind experienced safety and love, and now it's seeking that same feeling in romantic relationships. So if you had great parents, congratulations, your brain is running on premium relationship fuel. If your childhood was rockier, don't worry, your brain is smart enough to seek out the good stuff and learn what healthy looks like from other sources. Either way, your early experiences are still writing the code for your future love life. But here's where it gets really wild. This isn't just about humans. Number four, we're just fancy animals following ancient scripts. Plot twist, we're not special. Imprinting plays an important role in sexual attraction and love attachment in animals as well as in humans. From ducks to primates, babies across the animal kingdom are basically taking relationship notes on their parents and filing them away for later use. This isn't a human quirk. It's evolution, doing what evolution does best. The difference is we humans are complicated enough to feel weird about it while still doing it anyway. A baby duck sees its mom and thinks, this is what love looks like, and then spends its adult life looking for someone who waddles with the same confidence. 
We do the exact same thing, except we overthink it and then write psychology papers about it. It's like being self-aware that you're following a recipe your grandmother wrote, except the recipe is for finding your soulmate. We can intellectualize it all we want, but at the end of the day, we're still just really sophisticated animals with really specific preferences programmed by millions of years of evolution. And speaking of recipes, there's actually a genetic ingredient we haven't talked about yet. Number five, your DNA is playing the long game. Here's where it gets scientifically spicy. Research suggests that similarity between spouses is an indirect effect of sexual imprinting because 50% of maternal genes are shared with sons. Your genetics aren't just along for the ride, they're actively influencing who makes your heart skip a beat. Think about it. Half of your genetic makeup came from your mom, so when you find someone with similar traits to her, you're literally being attracted to genetic patterns that feel familiar. It's like your DNA has a comfort zone and prefers to stick with what it knows works. It's like your DNA looked at your parents' relationship and thought, you know what, that worked pretty well. Let's do that again, but with more Netflix and less landline phones. Your genes are basically playing matchmaker using a 50-year-old playbook. But before you start thinking this is all just biological destiny, let me tell you about the plot twist that changes everything. Number six, your brain can override its own programming. Here's the fascinating part that'll make you feel like you have some control back. Research shows that early experience with kin boosts sexual attraction when a person is unaware of the incest taboo, but reduces sexual attraction when the person is aware of the culturally imposed taboo. Basically, your conscious mind can totally veto your unconscious mind's suggestions. Your prefrontal cortex is like the responsible adult supervising your primitive brain's matchmaking attempts. Your brain is smart enough to recognize when its pattern matching is getting a little too on the nose. It's like having a really enthusiastic wingman who occasionally suggests your actual sibling and you have to be like, whoa there buddy, let's redirect that energy. Your higher level thinking can step in and course correct when the imprinting gets too literal. It's like having a really persistent personal shopper that you can just ignore if their recommendations get too weird. Your prefrontal cortex is basically the adult in the room saying, I see what you're doing brain and we're going to need some boundaries here. This is why awareness of these patterns actually gives you more control over your dating choices. And here's another way your brain gets creative with this whole parent copying thing. Number seven, it's not just looks. Your brain is copying the whole vibe. Studies show that adults are attracted to features in potential mates which resemble their opposite sex parent. And we're not just talking about physical features. We're talking about mannerisms, speech patterns, even the way they laugh at their own jokes. Your brain is keeping track of everything. Your unconscious mind is basically running a sophisticated matching algorithm that would make dating apps jealous. It's analyzing everything from how your mom tilted her head when she was thinking to how your dad's voice got softer when he was being sweet. No detail is too small for this mental database. Think of it like this. While you were growing up, your brain was essentially creating a highlight reel of what love looks like. And now it's using that footage as a reference guide. Every gesture, every vocal inflection, every way of showing affection got filed away for future romantic reference. But here's the million dollar question that's probably been bugging you. Number eight. This explains your type better than any dating quiz. Ever wondered why you keep ending up with the same personality type? Congratulations, you've discovered your parental imprint in action. As relationship expert Kane explains, romantic love evolves when one feels a sense of interdependence, attachment, and that their psychological needs are being met. Sound familiar? That's because this is the exact same formula your parents used when they were raising you. And who first taught you what it felt like to have your psychological needs met? That's right, the people who made sure you were fed, safe, and loved before you could even walk. They created your template for what safety and love should feel like in a relationship. Every time you felt comforted, understood, or valued as a child, your brain was taking notes about what good relationship energy looks like. 
So that type you think you have, it's not just random preference. It's your brain seeking out the emotional patterns that first made you feel secure and valued. Your dating history is basically just variations on a theme your parents composed when you were tiny. You're not being repetitive. You're being loyal to your first experience of love. Now, before you go spiraling into an existential crisis about free will, this actually makes you a better partner. Plot twist, this isn't a bug in your system, it's a feature. Science explains why people pick partners who look like their parents without involving Freud, and it's actually evolutionary genius. Your brain is essentially using a proven template for successful relationships. Think about it. If your parents managed to successfully raise a human, spoiler alert, that's you, then they probably had some good relationship skills worth copying. They figured out how to compromise, communicate, and care for another person long term. That's valuable intel right there. Your brain isn't being lazy. It's being smart. It's looking at the relationship that literally created you and saying, hey, this formula worked out well enough to produce a functioning adult. Maybe we should try some of these strategies. It's like having a relationship mentor you don't even know you're consulting. And here's the final mind blower that ties it all together. Number 10. You can use this knowledge as your dating superpower. Now that you know your brain's secret dating algorithm, you can actually work with it instead of against it. Harvard research suggests that successful couples share goals and aspirations, stay curious about each other, and make time for regular connection. The same building blocks your parents used, just updated for the modern world. The key is recognizing which parental patterns serve you, like dad's emotional intelligence or mom's sense of adventure, and which ones you might want to consciously override, like that tendency to shut down during arguments or avoid difficult conversations. You get to be the editor of your own romantic script. Look, your brain is going to keep running this program whether you're aware of it or not, but now that you know what's happening behind the scenes, you can be the director of your own romantic comedy instead of just an actor who doesn't know their lines. You can choose which parts of the parental playbook to keep and which to rewrite entirely. That's all for today. I'll be making more videos like this, so subscribe if you don't want to miss them.